congratulations. I knew we had you back last night, but I had been sleep and all the the night before. So that's good. I felt bad because she's not being part of it. That'd be more detailed than I said. I don't because I barely know, but it's still fun. It's fun. I mean, I know it's more well. All right, ladies, we're just going to go ahead and start. I understand what I mean. Because when he kind of slim in number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe ten, but maybe they'll kind of filter in. All right, you ready? We're going to pray. Father, I just thank you so much um, for bringing us through thank Romans. You, Jesus. It is just amazing that uh, next week we have finished the book of Romans, uh, a two-year course. Lord, what, what faithfulness. I just thank you so much for that. Father, I just pray that um, as we apply what we know, that our lives would definitely change and that we would be convicted in those changes and praise you for revealing the change that needed to happen. And Father, I just uh, especially pray for Ken and Marjorie Feeling this morning as Ken's been in the hospital since uh, about Tuesday. Thank you, Father, that it is not related to his heart, but I just pray that uh, the pain that he was experiencing, um, Lord, that they would find out what it is and have a definite diagnosis and plan to help him and to relieve that. Thank you for Marjorie and just the support that she has. Father, I just pray that we would continue to lift them up uh, as we go home or, and as we uh, walk in the way and as we rise up and as we lay down, that they would remember to bring them before the throne. I pray for Heidi as they are preparing for a wedding on Saturday, for Jackie and Jakari, and I just uh, thank you for bringing those two together and just ask, Lord God, that you would bless that union help Heidi to just have a wonderful time at that wedding and that you would give her the stability uh, to do that. In your precious name we pray, amen. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. Kay Walker. Yes. Father, I just pray for Kay. Um, Lord, she is so far away and I just thank you for the impact that she had on our lives. And I uh, just ask, Lord, that you would touch her body and heal yes. Uh, this cancer in her brain. Lord, I just uh, thank you for the doctors being able to remove so much of that tumor. And uh, Father, I just pray that the radiation and chemo would work. And also, Father, that most of all, your healing touch would touch her body and restore her to health. In your precious name, amen. Okay. okay. I'm not going to be happy with that. Oh, no, I have not heard about Nancy, whether, you know, it's better or not. So. Still. Splenda. Thank you so much. Okay. I have to get this camera right. So sorry. Nope. Okay. That one's better. Very good. Okay. You know what we're going to start with? Review? Review! <laughs> and may I tell you, Amy, that practice team, I was so nervous about this Christmas thing because I didn't know how to pronounce those words, especially in movement. And every time I go to practice, I like, I really knew that. I knew, oh, you go, I'm so good. I thought, I know that part really good, but that's like part three. I don't know part two. So. As that practice date. Good. Yeah. Score. It's clear. Oh yes, so so good. Because it is easy. You don't you know you don't realize that it's so easy once you know once you hear it. It's just easy. Yeah, I was going to sing it together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, please do. In case Marjorie updates you, that would be good. Okay. Romans one through one seventeen. What's the whole theme of Romans? The righteous shall live by faith. Good. Okay, Romans 1, 1 to 17. Well, we know 16 to 17, right? I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, to all who believe, to the Jew first, Jew first and also to the Greek. In it, the righteousness, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith, faith to faith. faith. As it is written, just shall live by faith, or the righteous shall live by faith. Good. So what's 1 to 117 about?
Well, what's 16 and 17 about? The righteous shall live by faith. So it's and the big word of the gospel. the gospel. What does the changing? The gospel. Right. So that's got to be what our theme is about the gospel. Okay. Now you have the other section between 118 to 320. What was chapter 2 all about? Yeah. The law. The law. So he's specifically putting that to what group of people? Yes, the Jews, the Judaizers, right. Okay, um, have out your um, at a glance chart. Okay, so, I mean, that, that'll help you to go, oh, yeah, that's what that's about. Okay, no problem in that. That's what it's there for. So, only the doers of the law are just, is kind of what we have in there. Then you can have through 320. Because we're not getting to 323 yet, so we stop at 320. Okay? All have sin. All have sin, which includes Jews and Gentiles. Jews and Gentiles, because all, you know, in the Greek means all. All. Right. Right. What are we talking about, uh, chapter, really, chapter 2 and 3? Not a really good character quality we want to think of, God has, but He has it. Wrath. 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 Okay? Um, so if all of sin, that means none are no one done or righteous. Okay? Why does he have to lay that down first? So we know we all need a savior. That's it. That's it. Who would have thought they really didn't need a savior because they have been <coughs> righteous their whole entire life? The Jews. The Jews. Right. Right. Okay, then you get 321. We know 323 says all have sin. Fall short. Do you remember what that fall short meant? Missing the mark. It's like a, a man pulled out his bow and he continually misses the mark. He gets close, but he continually misses it. Okay? I like Three her five. drawing. I, re I still remember clearly because I hear often, you know, about the moral people and how could, but they're so righteous, mm -hmm. they're so good. Mm -hmm. How could they miss heaven? But she in her lecture had drawn all those arrows, you know, up to heaven, and one of them came this close, and some of them came that close, but they all missed it. And one was just they that just close. couldn't. Why but they there? all missed the mark. Right, right. Because no one can reach the mark. Nobody can be that good. So, what's your argument to people when they go, "I am a good person"? I know a little bit. Compared to who? Compared to who? That's that's your line right there. But compared. Who? Me? You're right. You are good. <laughs> you are so right. Okay, let's not even put Christ there. How good are you compared to the Pope? <clears throat> if we have to be good, are you as good as that? Well, oh, well, we've already got a problem with humanity then, don't we? We haven't even compared ourselves to the Son of God yet. So how good is good? That's If you're basing your eternal security on how good you are, that's a little scary thing to me. So we're justified by faith, faith, faith not the, the not the law. Not the law. See its progression. Okay. Now we get into chapters six through eight. What are those about? Think about your, you know, your Think about that. Sanctification. Yeah, okay. Sanctification. How? Through faith. Okay, the spirit of life of Christ Jesus set us free, free from the law of sin and, death. sin and death. Okay, now we get to 9 through 11, but we know in chapter 8, what is it that we love to quote chapter 8? No, no There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ, Christ, Jesus. In Christ Jesus, but all of sin. What do you do with that? Well, you're dead to sin, but alive in God. And there's your change. So you changed, so now you're not under condemnation. Right. Who would have had the biggest problem with that? The Jews. And how come? The law. Yeah. They grew up with the law. They knew the law. Yeah. They, they can't do without it. Yeah. Part That's of the it's part of who they are. Yeah. Part of who they are. Tradition, tradition, <laughs> tradition. <laughs> I mean, truly, if you've never seen Fiddler on the Roof, you get tradition. Once you see that, it's like, I get it. I get that's what the tradition they always say. I, that's what they're talking about. 
I've never been in tradition that deeply rooted ever. So to grow up like that, what a change of lifestyle. Can you imagine? Okay, um, so 9 to 11. Sovereignty. Sovereignty of God, right. Because who did the gospel come to first? Jews. Well, why would he do that when he knew they were going to reject him? Well, he chose them as an example for the rest of the world to follow. Excellent. Excellent. And, and he showed us how to follow them in, in what book does he just totally set them apart? Of the Bible. What book of the Bible? Do you know? Exodus. Okay, because he brought them out. Exodus means exit. He brought them out. Where did he bring them out from? Egypt. Egypt. Slavery, slavery, right? And he set them out, and he that's when he gave him the law. That's when he told them, this is what you do, this is what you don't do. This is what you're supposed to sacrifice. This is what you're not supposed to sacrifice, okay? He totally set them apart right then. Okay, then we get into where we are, right? We went over chapter 14 and chapter 13. Um, 13 was about what? Respect. Authority. Respect authority, submitting to governing authorities. Okay, Chuck's going to have a great sermon. I just can't wait to hear that about uh, you are required to subject yourself to authorities, but he's also going to put a but in there. So that was that was pretty cool. He's he's such a wonderful pastor, you know. He's like, is this Pastor Appreciation Month? Isn't October Pastor Appreciation Month? It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but I think October is Pastor of Appreciation. I'm like, that man should have a whole office full of things he just can't quite get through because he's so appreciated. All our staff should actually. Uh, that's my thing. Now we go into Chapter 14. Anybody have this tested on them this week? Stronger brother, weaker brother? Don't. Uh, look at him with contempt. Don't judge him. Anybody have that happen this week? I know I did. <laughs> Somebody who doesn't have quite a right or same thought process as me. It doesn't affect their salvation at all. Not at all. And those of you in home group know exactly what I'm talking about. It doesn't. I, I, it was very difficult, but doesn't affect their salvation. So move on. Wow. I mean, you teach it Thursday, and uh, well, let's put that into practice Friday night. Really? <laughs> Seriously? Do I have to? That was difficult. Very hard. How do you get through that? I mean, I'm not sure I did it very well. You, yeah, you've got to show your children to your family. Yeah. The only thing I did was ask pointed questions. I wanted to make sure what I was hearing him say was really what I was, he was saying, uh -huh. that I wasn't here part of it and went off on a tangent. And that's all I said. That, that's it. Because there's no point in arguing. Yeah. Because it doesn't affect his salvation. It doesn't affect my salvation. It's, right. it's a, it's a non-essential, as we always call it. It's a non-essential. Uh, a whole, but whole denominations are built on your opinion on this. And if you don't believe this, you can't be part of that denomination. Right, yeah. Okay, right. Uh, so I'm not part of that denomination. I don't, I, don't, I don't have a problem, you know? But you do have to go home and <sighs> <laughs> You know, because it's like, but this is what I believed, and Did this you is what I've taught, maybe. Come across anybody Could it possibly be that that's not right? Weaker brother or had different you know? So, you know, you know who I emailed. So <laughs> I, I got to be right because if I'm speaking here and that what I've said <clears throat> is not right for somebody's salvation, I got to know. I got to make sure I have not led anybody astray on that, and, and I haven't because that is a non-essential. If, if that's my point of view, that's my point of view based on this scripture, and, <clears throat> right. and, and so many points of view are based on so many other different. But it doesn't say you're saved, you're not saved. So let it go. It, it just creates division, as Paul so appropriately said in chapter 14. Okay? So I, I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting. Um, Jenny. Romans 14. Yes, update on Ken. Uh, Ken is comfortable. Uh, his uh, pancreas was acting up because of the gallstone. The gallstone is lodged in the bile duct. They are waiting to find out just where it is 
They will be doing gallbladder surgery, but they don't know when. His Coumadin level, she called it something else, but I think it has to do with Coumadin because I know he's on that. It's too high. They have to wait till that level gets down so they can do surgery safely. So but he walk. is comfortable. Oh, good. But it's still kind of all up in the air as to when they'll do it. Okay. All right. Thank you. He's in Florida South. Okay. Um, I want to make sure we have an understanding, very clear understanding of Chapter 14, Verse 7 and 8. I shared that last week. I want to make sure that everybody understands that, okay? So let's read chapter 14, verses 7 and 8. <clears throat> for not one of us lives for himself, and not one dies for himself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, or if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. Explain that verse to me. Verse says. Because you notice his big ginormous jump from eating, not eating, worshiping, not eating, to dying. That's and ginormous. That we are all unique. God made all of us and how we use and what we see. Because it's so marvelous when you read scripture, something jumps out at you, which may be different to what jumps right. out the other person. Right. So we are all unique, so we shouldn't judge or we should love each other because we are all God's And not creation. regard with contempt, right? Is right. it like, like if somebody is doing something that you don't think is right, and then, but he's doing for the right thing, but in his heart. His conviction in his heart. It's for the Lord. Right. But for that person is not. Right. So it's like, even if it's good or bad to somebody else, it is for the Lord. So we must, That's right? right. So who's dying? The person, the, the person watching them do yes. what they don't agree with. Right. Who's right. living? The person, that's doing, the person that's doing it. Because he's doing it from the heart. So. Right. Because that's his conviction in his heart. That's so weird, right? Isn't it? It's, it's right <laughs> Isn't for it? me. And you can't convince anybody else it's right for me. Right. You know? That's it. So that person that even though she no, it's not right for her and she she supports me. She loves me. There you go. That's the love in Christ. There you go. Right? Yes. And that's so absolutely <laughs> it. That is absolutely it. Because there are people that are going to be younger in their faith than you. And there are going to be people that are older in their faith mm -hmm. than you. <clears throat> and those people older in the faith than you are going to be patient with you. Knowing She's just got a little ways to grow on that. And, you know, God will keep her long. It'll be all right. And I'm going to be your friend and supporter. We'll, we'll be good. I'll just pray for her and uh, be her friend and supporter. And then when God changes that in her, awesome. <laughs> but it's not a conviction about that part. I'm not talking about whether you drink or you don't drink or you go to our music or you don't. This is a maturity level thing, okay, of, of uh, maybe not being able to trust God with something or thinking God is angry with you and God keeps doing these things to me. I don't know what I'm doing. That kind of thing. The stronger brother would be going, oh, baby, that's not what it is at all. Not at all. He thought, God's not angry with you. you. He sees you as his chosen child. He sees Jesus in you. He's not angry with you. But there are things happening in your life. I understand what you're saying about that. But I don't think that's why? Because God's angry with you. There must be some lesson you need to learn. Mm -hmm. And if you have to keep repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating this trial, I don't think you're getting it. But I can't come and say, will you just please get it so we can move on? <laughs> no, that's you dying and letting that person live. Okay? And people do that with me. Okay? She'll get it. She'll get it. It'll be okay. <laughs> they're letting me live, and they're dying, okay, mm -hmm. to their rights, their maturity. But they can look down on you with contempt because, oh, I went through that years ago. I don't know why it's taking you so long to, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. that's not, uh, that's maturity looking down with contempt. Or the weak, judging. Can't do that. You have to learn. To let it go and give it to God. That's it. For goodness sakes. That's, that's, it. that's well, just it. And it's so hard sometimes to do that. Mm -hmm. But you've got to do that. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Because what's the whole point in the body of Christ? He's, he's going to take care of Love and 
oneness. Yeah. Okay, the world does stuff like that. We are not to be doing that. The whole point is unity, unity, unity. I mean, look in verse, uh, is it? No, that's going to be in verse 15, or chapter 15 when we get one, 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 and one. Okay? I don't think he can say it more often than that. So whether we live or we die, we are. The Lord's right. Our conviction must be here and here. Why are we doing or not doing something? Because we're doing it as under the Lord, because that is our own conviction. Okay? Rosa. I don't know if I'm able to explain this the way I, I, I understood or what I want to understand. Right. Like, um, like if, you, if you see somebody doing something that in your conviction is not right or, you know, and then you, you, you think, okay, like you said, because I, I thought about it when you were saying, Oh, she's gonna get it. She's gonna grow. I'm gonna love her. Uh, I want to be like feeling that we know better than her. Right. Are we? But well, in, again, I'm not talking about externals on that. Externals. Those I'm not talking about externals. Okay. What I'm talking about is growing up in the faith. Okay. You know, I mean, I mean, there is is a a, a woman now that I grieve for because she is not growing up in the faith. Mm -hmm. She's just treading water. We're not going anywhere. We're just staying in our nice little thing, and I like to do this, and I have time, but I don't want to, because okay. that's gonna cost me, and that woman I pray for. Mm -hmm. Because if she's stagnant, she's not gonna make any change in the world. She's not fulfilling God's purpose in her life, which is to glorify Him. The only way we can glorify Him is to know who He is, because but to glorify means sure, to give a correct estimate of who He is. How can you sure you, that she is like that? Is Maybe it's God's purpose that she's like that for something else. For her words, mm -hmm. the conversations that we have, and the lifestyle that she leads. The other way you can be sure is you pray about it. Mm -hmm. And you ask for God's enlightenment in your heart in how to, if you're to address the situation, mm -hmm. or, you know. Or let it go. Or let it go. Mm -hmm. Right. You've got to give it right. to God. Because and who are the people that best deal with that situation? Go back to spiritual gifts. gifts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exhortation. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Those right. are the people that deal with it best because they know who to go to. Right. Not because that's their favorite thing, but because God puts that on their heart, you need to talk to this person about. So you're saying through the words and through actions. And the lifestyle shows the attitude of the heart. Right. Am I being judgmental? No. I'm not. If I'm being judgmental if I... I cannot believe she is doing that. I'm going to tell you this is wrong and this is right and this is what you That's judgment. Nothing in that is love. Absolutely no love whatsoever in there at all. Um, so what am I called to do for this word? Pray. 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 Love changes the heart. Love her. God. Love her. God changes the heart. I want her to have a desire to know her God, not just to do the little church thing. Well, that's danger in that. Because if you don't know doctrine, what does Timothy tell you? You're going to be blown about by every wind of doctrine. Oh, this is right. Oh, I don't think this is right anymore. I think this is right anymore. Why? Because you don't know for yourself. That's the danger. That's how people get. You're like, how could you fall for that? Mm, watch out. You might fall for something just as silly. Unless you know what you believe, why you believe it, where you believe it, and be ready in and season and out season to give an answer for your faith. It's a dangerous place to be. So, okay. Well, the big example is the prosperity gospel. Well, how many that, people yeah. have fallen for that? Right, right. The prosperity gospel. Or Jesus is coming back this day, so we need to sell everything and go on the mountain and wait. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty close. You know? <laughs> Daniel even wrote that down on the calendar. The world ends. <laughs> I got Daniel. Seriously. Seriously, we had to write that on the calendar. Well, I just wanted to put it down there. Mr. Primo was wrong. Okay. okay, if we uh, we went back this week to uh, Romans 14, 1 through 12. So go ahead and pull out your chart. That's homework, page 48. Where you had the principle of liberty, the principle of love, and then Christ's example. Okay? Okay. Let's let's just go over that a little bit. Okay? Your principle of liberty. First of all, you had to define it. Was that a little difficult? 
I mean, I don't think scripture actually said, this is the principle of liberty. <clears throat> I was like, I have to define it? Hmm. Um, so I just kind of took scripture, except the one that's weak in faith. Right. How's their liberty in that? Well, uh, you, don't, you are not judging mm. because you accept the responsibility. Yes. You don't have to be responsible. <laughs> <laughs> That's the part I love. I don't have to be responsible. <laughs> oh, I am not responsible for that. <laughs> but I love that <laughs> because I'm that little golden retriever. Making sure everybody's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Everybody's okay. You know, I didn't do that right, so you didn't fail it. It's really kind of bad because. I have liberty, and all I have to do is accept them. All I have to do, because God, because God already accepted right. them. Because why does that free you up and cause you not to judge and cause you not to regard with contempt? Because God's already accepted them, and you know what happens when you put the finger. Yeah. So who's God also already accepted? Me. Oh, perfect little me. <laughs> No, no, so imperfect little me that if people knew, oh my word, I would be so embarrassed. With the timber kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, the law yeah, that's like Chuck said, you know, make up the little speck in your. Yeah. Uh, Paul hammers it down like nobody else I know. Like, uh, but God's accepted you. Oh, yeah, there's that. And whatever we do, we do it for the Lord. We do it for the Lord. So, what does that deal with? The heart, the heart, the heart, the heart. Why do you do what you do? Because you love the Lord and you want to please Him. You want to fulfill the purpose in your life that He has for you. Why are you here? It's not a difficult question. It's not, the will of God is not this mystery. I wonder if I'm doing. Are you doing what Scripture says? Are you, as the conviction is in your own heart, I don't know scripture. Well, there you go. There's the will of God. Learn scripture. That's not difficult. Well, am I supposed to this or am I supposed to that? Well, how do you know? Pray. If it doesn't go against God's scripture and his absolute law of something you absolutely know, then it's just an opinion, right? Well, I want to do that. I think this would be a good thing to do. Do it. It's not this, this, oh, I stepped out of the will of God. No, it's not. And we make it so hard, and it just isn't hard. The knowing the scripture really gives you it. It gives like, you such direction. Yell at me. It's, I did not say that. I, it's it's what scripture says. Go there. It, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Unless you can show me that this verse doesn't say that, because maybe I'm interpreting it wrong. Man, I'm totally open to, to correction. Please do that. I do not want to walk in incorrection. But I only go for those very simple ones because yeah, it, it, I don't you know, know right. the will of God is really yeah, it's really just as wrong. simple as that. Okay. Don't dare to. So you have a principle of liberty. You define it. Then you listed it. How, what things did you list on your little column there? You should support the weak. Support the weak. Like yeah. Those important. Not see things as we do. Ah, oh, that's great. Not just see things as we see them. Because that creates what? Contempt. We live and die for God. That's it. Christ died and lived again to be Lord both dead and the living. That's it. That's Christ's example, isn't it? If we could just follow that, if we could just remember his example. Uh, just a, a few things that was I put that except the one weak in faith. That's first what? <coughs> Is that one? One. Verse one. Yeah, verse one. Okay? And they were not supposed to pass judgment on his what? Opinion. Opinions. That's, it. That's what he's thinking then in his head, isn't it? That's his conviction in his head. This is his opinion. Okay? Ever had anybody tell you, you shouldn't feel like that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's my opinion because this is how I feel. Well, that's just silly. How do you feel? What does that make you feel like? Fighting back. Yeah. But anybody my has, boxing. Anybody book. tell you any, ever that? Why do you have to throw the scripture everything you do? <laughs> yes. That's a good commentary on your life. Have to. Have to. 
But when somebody puts down or negates your feelings, that makes you feel worthless. Or tells me I don't feel that way. Right. Yeah. You don't feel that way. You can't feel that way. Yeah, I do. I do. That's what we're not supposed to do to our fellow brother. We're not supposed to tell him, I just can't believe you feel like that. That's just so silly. Ooh. It's good to go to Ooh, the doctor. Ooh, that wasn't in love, was it? Good to go to the doctor and tell that you can't breathe. And you feel like this, and then he does, there's no, yeah, you, you can't feel that way because there's nothing wrong. Right. Right. So what do you very go? Very real next. to me. Very <laughs> yeah. I can't breathe. Yeah. Walking out of here, going to the next guy. Yeah. Okay. Right. So if we accept, then what's the automatic flow? We don't judge if we accept. That totally negates that behavior. Don't regard any brother with contempt. Well, if we can't regard them with contempt if we've already accepted them. <coughs> because that causes us not to judge, which causes us not to regard with contempt. We shall stand before Christ to be judged. Why is that important to remember? He's the judge. Yeah. We will all stand before Christ. The judgment seat of the last day. There you go. Yeah. So your focus is really to be on how you live and what you do and the heart condition of why you do what you do okay not to please somebody else all right 13 to 23 that's the principle of <coughs> love what's that give me a definition on that right right how's the world supposed to know us by our love, not by our judging and contempt. And our rule following. They're supposed to know us by our love. Okay, that's different in the world. It said don't judge anymore. That's a clock, isn't it? Because that means they were judging. judging. Right. You need Mary Ann? Mike needs you. Okay, so... If we don't judge any more, then that was a behavior we were having that Paul's going with his little lovely exhortation in love. Don't do that anymore. Okay. How could he say that? Because he knows. <laughs> there you go. He was a perfect example to go, you know, I did that. And probably, probably a little bit more than you guys did, because I like held Stephen's cloaks while they were stoning him, kind of judging. I went way over the top. Yeah, don't do that because that leads nowhere good. Then they would they take that. Yeah, they would take that from him. He's lived it. I'm gonna tell you that's that's how we go. Look, learn from me. That wasn't it. Okay. Uh, don't cause a brother to stumble because of your law of liberty or freedom. I am free to do. Oh, he's who's he nailing really now? Antinomians. The antinomians were they free? They were totally so free of the law. Free. <laughs> so free of the law. What a great feeling, liberty. <laughs> they were so free. They did wrong. That's it. They were so free. They did what they weren't supposed to do because they were free. Because there was grace to cover all that, which there is. But we've laid down chapters 1 through 11. We don't act like that because we are not that man anymore. We died to Christ. We were raised to walk in newness of life. We don't, we don't live like that. Not anymore. Okay? All right, what else do you have down there? How can you not cause a brother to stumble? How are you walking? Considering your problem. If somebody can eat it's something, alone. do not tempt. Right. Don't do not tempt. Okay? Because you're walking in love. love. Yes. Isn't that what it's all about? I mean, we're in finally in chapter 14, two chapters away from the end, and he's bringing it back up again, isn't he? Walk in love. What else? Build each other up, he tells us. Build instead of tear. What is judging and, and regarding with contempt do? There's no building up and there's no love in either of those, which would have included the strong and the weak. There's when you judge, that's not love. When you regard with contempt, 
that's not love either. Okay? Now, how could you hurt a brother? Ouch. Condemning him. By condemning them. Because we can go back to 8.1 and say there is no <laughs> condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Well, is that weak brother in Christ? Mm -hmm. Is that strong brother in Christ? Mm -hmm. Yes. Neither one is to regard with contempt because we are all <sighs> accepted by God. He accepted both of us in our current state. We didn't clean up before we got to him. Okay. This goes mm -hmm. back to James also where they talk about the tongue it is so uh, much and it's yes. so free sometimes yeah, we that just, we hurt. Yeah, 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 don't we? Man, I'm so guilty of that. It's like, shut your mouth. Just shut it. But sometimes it's actions, not just because, you know, you choose to do something that you know is going to be hard for someone else to accept. Yeah. When you could so easily avoid doing it. not doing it. Them. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, I can because. Right. Because I can. I have the freedom to do that. Yeah. Which the antinomians could have held over the Jews. I'm eating a pork rib. <laughs> Don't you want it? They'd be like, <laughs> you can't do that. I can. I am free to do that. And I'm serving on toast to eat. There you go. Was he eating in love? No. no. He was regarding with contempt his brother. Can't do that. Just can't do that. So many people in the world think that we're hypocrites because we don't do in front of a brother, so right. they won't stumble. But we do do exactly other mm -hmm. times, so they call us hypocrites. So they call us hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, giving glory to God? No. no, no. That's not building up the body at all. That's that's just showing the world that you guys are no different. Oh boy, when somebody, an unsafe person, says that, it kills me. Just kills me. It's like that's what's happening in church right now. Yes. Yeah. Church is divided over carpet color. It's we are quiet to every single place. It's over silly, silly things. Okay, pursue peace, verse 19 says, and building up. All right. <coughs> um, where has peace been mentioned before? Peace with God. Mm, because you had peace enemies. with God. Yes, when we were enemies. So pursue peace. How can you possibly have peace? Because of love. Right. If you have judgment and contempt, can you have peace? It's not possible. If you walk in love and build your brother up, what does that create? Peace. Right. Peace and joy. Peace and joy. Ever had somebody try and argue with you and you're just not going to argue back? I understand. I, I'm sorry you feel that way. Right. <laughs> what do they start doing? Calming down. They don't yell anymore because you're not participating. <laughs> okay? Irritates the fire out of them because you're not fighting with them, but it also calms them down. It brings a little bit of reason back. It takes a lot of control to do that. A lot of love, right? A lot of breathing. Don't get sucked in. Just Calm for the soft answer. Turn the way back. Okay? It's a great tactic when you're parenting. Great tactic. Because they don't know what to do with that because everybody they fight with fights back. But mom's not fighting back. Just a nurse. Right? Right. Because I don't have to fight for my authority over you. God sovereignly gave me that. So if you have a problem, you're going to have to talk to God about that because. I didn't decide you were going to be my kid. God did. So if you got a problem, you're going to have to talk to him because that authority is given to me by him. So see, when you go against that, you better talk to him because that's who you're fighting against. And they don't like that at all because then there's no argument. It's like, oh, uh, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, pursue peace and building up. Don't tear down. What's the opposite of building up? Tearing down. Okay? All right, let's go to chapter 15. Great chapter. Now, we who are strong, that's the first mention of that word. Do you believe that? I thought, no. -uh. I, I, I don't know how to mark this. Let me go back and see how I marked it in chapter 14. Anybody else see that? Yeah. Come on, I went there. so far. <laughs> yeah. 
not it's not there. We have to see there's a read right. But it's implied, isn't it's it? Implied. It's yeah. implied. Yeah. But now he's just brilliant. This is amazing. They ought to bear the weaknesses of those without strength and not just please ourselves. You know bear is hupomeno? You know what that means? Here comes somebody and they bear up under and they help you carry that burden. Carry the wow. That's a carry the weight. They're helping you carry the weight. Right. If they're doing that, what they, what they, they can't be doing what? Condemning. Condemning or tearing down or judging. Regarding with, you can't do that if you're bearing up under. Because why would you even think to do that if you're judging and contempt? You know, having an attitude of contempt. What makes you want to bear under those weaknesses? Walking in love. I love this verse. Okay. First, uh, chap not chapter, the first. The first one? Do not just please yourself. I, I just... Right. It's now, is that, a, is that an opposite behavior of what you used to be? Because you died, right? Right. You died to the law of sin and death. You were raised to walk newness in newness of life. Would this be a character of newness of life? Wow. Okay? Not just please ourselves. Who was the ultimate example? Christ did that. Right. He didn't just please himself. He came down to show you this is what life is about. And where he came And where he came from. Yeah. Each of us is to please his neighbor. Why? For his good. For his good and his edification. What's another word for edification? Thank you. No, building, up. building up. Right. Okay? You can't do that if you're judging and regarding with contempt. It's not possible. For even Christ did not please himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. Anybody know where that's from? It was in Psalm. That's right. 69.9. The NIV says, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. Why would that give you comfort at all? Because Christ bore it for us. That's it. Have we ever been insulted like he was? No. Not like that. Not like that. So the sufferings that we endure in this present world are nothing compared to the glory that awaits us. Jenny, can we put that in the other words? The reproach kind of... Oh, the insults of those who insult you have insult. fallen on me. Okay. That's just the NIV. Again, if you kind of go, well, who's the you or who's the who? Blame. Who says that? Blame. What says blame? What's which? Uh, dictionary. The definition of reproach. Yeah. Oh. Blame. Reproach. Reproach is almost shame. You yeah. know. It's just blame. If you regard with someone with reproach, yeah. you're almost like ashamed of them. That's gonna go to the trash that dictionary. I would also <laughs> tell you guys when you get a, a you know, it's like who's the who and who's the you. I don't understand. Go look it up in a different version. Yes. Okay. K King James Version sometimes clears it up. Sometimes not. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the NIV clears it up. <clears throat> sometimes not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where would you go after that? Bible CC, right? Mm -hmm. Pull it up. You. Click on the you. Is this deity? Is this a pronoun for a person? What is this? Sometimes clear it right up. Sometimes what? In the margins of the same Yes, way. sometimes in the margins it does that. Okay? Even when I went back to Psalm 69.9, I was like, it doesn't exactly say that word for word. I'm like, I'm all confused. Good. That makes you dig even deeper, doesn't it? To try and get clarification for yourself. I want to know who the you is and who the who is. And be right about it. Because it's all in caps, so there's no help whatsoever there. Okay? For whatever was written in earlier times, did you get this written? But as it is written, written in earlier times, was written, then in verse 9, as it is written, where was it written? In the Old Testament. Okay? 
Why does he have to bring that up? Because they knew it. Of course, he's there. Because they knew it. Yeah, the Judaizers, serious. the Jews, mm -hmm. you know, totally knew that. Well, up one side and down the other. Why was it written? For our example, for our right, yeah. right, for, for our instruction. So do we have to follow what the Old Testament rules and laws say then? No, we don't have, have to for freedom, but they did for us. Christ blood. Right, right, covered that. Yeah. But is that the same God that wrote the Old Testament? Yes. 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 So how come we don't have to follow all the rules and regulations and laws and everything that they did? Because it was written for our instruction. As we know that we they well, need it, that's why we provided oh Christ. The law was shown to show us our need for a Savior. Savior. Does that Savior. instruct you? Mm -hmm. That instructs me, this is God and this is holiness and this is what he requires. Has that changed whatsoever? No. 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 Okay. By definition, how many laws Laws that God gives. Ten. Exactly. Yeah. The Pharisees added all that on. And now, we also added <laughs> statutes and ordinances. Okay? Because he didn't say, if you break these Ten Commandments. He said, when you break when. it. Right. And if you break it in this way, this is how you're supposed to do. Because every single time you broke a law, your ultimate goal was to restore what you did. Right. That makes you take personal responsibility for what you did. So we are to keep the 10. We are to keep the and 10. And Jesus Why? fulfilled all of the other rules and regulations for when you couldn't keep the and, 10. And Jesus said, what did he say? What did he say? The law is summed up in these two, two things. Two. Uh, two things. Yeah. Love, love your neighbor and your God. Your God. Yeah. Love, love, love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. Does yeah. that fulfill the 10? Yes. yes. Are you able to keep that now? Yes. Mm -hmm. How? You're covered in his blood and he's indwelling right. now. That's different. Right. Yes. In the Old Testament, he did not come inside. Okay? That's why I always say in the Old Testament, he came upon. And then he came upon. And he came upon. Right. But How come he didn't come inside? He's promising the one who is coming. He's promising Savior's coming. Yes. Savior's coming. That's going to be better. And he will put within you a new, new heart, heart, not one of stone, but of flesh. Because some, okay. sometimes people Holy say that the God doesn't change, so we, why he's changing this? Is it no? He's not changing. He's at mm -hmm. the same time promising. Savior, 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 coming. Savior, yes. so enable you to keep yes my requirements that you keep missing because all have sinned and fall short. Right. right. Okay. So how come in the Old Testament the Holy Spirit couldn't come inside? Because the blood had covered that's it okay Christ's perfect blood had not been spread on that mercy seat it was always a lamb a goat a dove because without the shedding of blood there's no remission of sin so the blood had this is the price of sin death 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 blood that's why he set up the tabernacle. That's why there was a holy of holies. That's why every little piece of furniture was in that tabernacle, just so, because it was a copy of what? The one that was in the heavens. That's why he had specific directions, okay? But when Christ came, what happened to that veil? It's Boom. Right. Now, according to the law, everybody should have died. died. You can't go to the holy of holies. If you're not the high priest, and only once a year, and you see into the Holy of Holies, you're dead. <laughs> but they didn't die. Why not? Because, because, the flesh because Christ, his <laughs> flesh was actually the veil rent in two. So you now have access before the throne. Everybody now has access. Jew, Gentile alike, it does not matter. We have access to the throne because of Christ the Lamb. Perfect blood over that mercy seat. Once for all, we're done. That's why he sat down at the right hand of the throne of the It's finished. It's done. Now we all have access. Now that perfect blood has paid the price for the sin. The lamb wasn't a perfect blood, the dove, the goat, that wasn't perfect blood, but blood had to be shed. Now we have the perfect sacrifice, once for all, holy, sinless blood,
pay the price once for all, we all can come into the presence of God freely and have access. But somewhere it tells us that he died, it was rented so that we could be united as one. Yes, yes, and united as one with who? With Christ. With Christ. You and Gentile now can come. We worship, we worship the same God. We come because of the blood of Christ. Not because of a lamb, because of a goat, because of a dove, because of the perfect Lamb of God who takes away the sin, sin of the world. He doesn't just pay for it. He takes it away. Big difference. Now we have the Holy Spirit come inside of us and we can keep that because we have that power that raised Christ from the dead that enables us to walk in that newness of life. Whoa, different. Totally different. That's the church age, the age of grace, the age whatever. Okay, that's what we live in. I'm so glad we live in that. And now we can call him brother. And now we can call him brother. That's it. That's it. It's unbelievable. Um, all right. We said strong. We're going to bear the weaknesses of those without strength. What was that key word, though? In the faith. So what are we talking about, weak and strong about? Believers. Believers and their faith. Okay, let's keep it in context from the chapter, the verse, the book, the whole scripture as a whole. We are talking about faith. Don't, don't take this out of context. Make it say what it does not say. Please our neighbor for his good and edification. Remember, edification is building up. Verse 2, follow Christ's example. Well, we could just stop right there, couldn't we? <laughs> There's no gray area there. Just follow his example. Now, we go into Christ's example on your little column. Okay, we've talked about principle of love. We've talked about the principle of, uh, what was the other one? Liberty. Liberty, thank you. Liberty, love, and now we have Christ's example. This was convicting. He took the reproach of others where? Himself. On himself, willingly. He wasn't dragged, kicking and screaming. He did it willingly. Where's the difference in what we do? Do we do that for our brother? No. <laughs> he did it. He did it. It was him. Yeah, I didn't have anything to do with that. Mm -mm. They did, right? And that could be absolutely true. Because when Christ did it, it was absolutely true. I did it. But he said, I'll take it. I'll take it. That's not fair. No, life's not fair. Life's not fair. That's God's Christ example. If we could just stop right there. If we just lived by what we know, the world would change. Because we have the best news in the world. This is why people search for love in all the wrong places. This is why people try and fill up that empty void in their life when only God can fill that. But they don't understand that, nor do they want to accept that because it can't be that easy. I've been trying to explain that to people. That don't you feel like you get money, you need more. If you get the car, you get you need bigger. You, whatever it is, you need the more portion for food when you tell me that you get more, 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 everything more. And does that and don't you and don't you start to feel why is that? Yeah. Because there's a place that only God, God can fill. fill. Right. And we try and fill it with so many different things. And right. he's so enough. That's so good. That's a and he is so good enough. Example. Yes. He is so enough. I love that. Now. How does Christ taking that reproach? Okay, relate back to what we've learned. I mean, I mean in all of Romans. Out of out love. Out of love. Okay? Mm. Out of love. Um, what, because he did that, do we now have? Life. We have life in self. Okay? What if he chose not to do that? <clears throat> We'd still be under the law. 
we would be dead in our sin. We would have no hope, which is also a great word we're coming into. For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction so that, so here's the why. Why was that written for our instruction? So that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Yeah, it is read hope. scripture. Scripture. Learn scripture. That's it. So God's word hasn't changed, right? Because it was written for your instruction. Has God's word changed? It can't because God doesn't change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if these words are his, they can't change because he doesn't change. They also have to be fair, right, just, holy because that's who he is. Louise. But this form of words that were written shows us what people went through that each of us are going to face the same thing yes. throughout life. Because we will all stand before believers stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, learning from Scripture brings perseverance, encouragement, and it gives hope. Anybody want to share how that has happened in their own life? that scripture has given you hope or encouragement that you never expected. Well, I know that's happened in your life. I think that um, my mother lay in bed from the middle of January to the 5th of May, not eating barely any liquids. And I live down there except coming back for playing the organ and cooking the dinner. But God gave me the perseverance. Yeah, to keep keeping on. Because, you know, people said, how can you do that? And I also had a husband who supported it. Right. But you can see it still. <laughs> it still hurts. There's pain like that that you can just put yourself back in that dark place just like that. And that feeling comes right, right away. And so... You don't put yourself in that hard place. You don't want to go back there. That's dark. I don't want to go there. I don't, uh -uh. I don't want to go there. When people ask me to share my testimony, I'm like, how long does it have to be? <laughs> how long do you want to talk? Okay. I have to because God was faithful. And he has performed miracle after miracle and encouraged and encouraged and given me hope, hope, hope. I have to share that. That's not a happy place to go to for me. That, I don't want to go there because that just brings back all that darkness. But in that darkness, there's hope. And I have to share with people who are in darkness now that there is encouragement, there is hope, but it's not in this room. It's in the scripture. It's in God Almighty, the only one that holds me in his hand. Nothing's going to happen to me unless he says, I, yeah, I think that needs to happen to her, whether I agree with it or not, because I'm his. If I don't rest in that, there's no hope. There's no encouragement. There's no peace. There's no joy, because I'm just a victim of bad things in the world. I can't live like that. Who can live like that? There's no encouragement or peace or hope in that. Just despair and depression. People need to hear that. What I want to go to is the definition of hope. Because I thought, now, now in part one, because I'm teaching Daniel part one, so I'm getting a great review. It's awesome. I'm going, I think we looked up hope back in part one because it was like chapter five. So I go back and look up the definition that I'd already looked up in hope. So let's, let's read this. <coughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. Elpsis or Elpis. I don't know. Elpis. I don't know. Desire of some good with expectation of obtaining it. This is, oh, I hope it happens. Mm, no, that's not what this is. Not at all. The God of hope means the author and source of hope, not the one who needs hope. He doesn't need hope. He's the author and source of that hope. So look at 5.5. Five. And hope does not disappoint. You can't have that kind of, oh, I hope it, no. You know just by that context, this is not the hope that is wishing. This is a certain hope. 
that does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit that was given to us. Because why do we walk like we walk? Of love. How can we have hope in such a despairing world? Because we know the author and source of hope. That's why. That hope is not within me. That hope is with him. And he does not disappoint. Not ever. He can't. Because if he says yes, the, the answer is yes. If he says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. He never disappoints. Now, let's look at, um, uh, well, apply it to 12, 1 to 3. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, what? Living sacrifice. How is this a living sacrifice if you're not to judge, you're not to regard with contempt, you're to walk in love, you're to build one another up and not tear down? How is that presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice? Probably feel like you're dead. Because you're feeling like you're dying. Right, right. I'm dying every time. Yeah, that's basically what your life you is. You die to yourself. You die to yourself. Setting aside what, whatever your motive is or right. your agenda or whatever. Especially the agenda. Anybody ever have that? This is what I have on my list to get done today. None of that got done today. Wow. Tomorrow. Maybe. That just depends on what God has for you to get done today. Because his agenda has to be your agenda. Or your Yours agenda for second. life. I or love, you know, we all, a lot of us have teenagers and stuff and thinking about what they're going to do for the future. And yes. We pray and go, and then, I, and then at the same time as they're planning their future, I'm thinking, I wonder what God will actually do. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if any <laughs> of You know, it's all like, close. you know, we, we walk and you walk forward, but, you know, then God they, has his agenda and we'll find out what that's that it. is. That's it. That's so good. And if they don't do what you want them to do, you just keep praying. You just <laughs> keep praying. <laughs> that's right. Mm -hmm. That's they right. don't do when they don't do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's read verses 5 and 6 because, man, Paul just throws in a prayer text here. Now may the God, how many gods? One. One God, the God, who gives perseverance and encouragement. Where was that? Where do you say that? In four. Yeah, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Grant you to be of the same mind. So how many minds is that? One. 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 With how many one another? One another, right? According to Christ Jesus, so that with one, one accord, you may with one, one voice. One vo where's the, what's the voice here thing? <laughs> Glorify the, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, what does he want? United. He wants unity. Right. Okay? Now, when I read that, it's the same mind with one another. One accord. One voice. Glorify God. It, 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 it's not, I'm glorifying God with my singing voice. Mm -mm. Your words, your speech, your language. And we all know there's another thing that you don't have to say at all, but everybody knows. Action. That's your action in your body language. Right? You're a countenance. Shall we say? Yep. Am I doing what's right? You bet I am. <laughs> Why? Because. Because it's the right thing to do. Hmm. My heart's not right. My actions are doing what I'm supposed to do, but my reasoning isn't. Okay, so something's got to happen in my heart here because I'm not doing it for the right reason. Now, and language. Uh, again, covers body language. Okay, let's go to verse 7. Judith, Therefore, yes. Sometimes if we do what's right, even with that countenance, you can come around right. to it because you have done it right and it worked out okay. And yes. so the next time it's easier with maybe a happier countenance. Absolutely, because as Chuck said, with actions come feelings. Mm -hmm. right. And it's true. If you continue to do what you know to be right, know to be right, even though you don't want to do it, the feelings will come. Okay? And it does work. And it does work. It does work. Therefore, therefore, what's it there for? Before things are Those things are, I already told you, you know. Unity, don't con you know, regard with contempt. Don't judge. Build one another up. Don't tear down. Well, if you do that, the natural progression is going to be that you accept one another. How? 
as Christ, as Christ, Christ, just as Christ accepted you. Oh, that's humbling. Would that be humbling for Paul? Yes. Uh -huh. Very. Mm -hmm. Because he knows what he was doing and what he was on his way to do when Christ accepted him. It's like, right. was, this is where your life changes. Right. This is where you fulfill the purpose I have for you in this world. Right here. Christ also accepted us. How? To the glory, to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Now, did you ever think about that? Glory now, remember, is to give a correct estimate. So if the correct estimate of who God is was in Christ accepting me, what does that tell you about your God? Mm -hmm. Is there judgment and contempt tearing down with him? No. no. He accepted me for what I am with all my weaknesses and failures and inconsistencies and saying one thing and doing another. He knew that he made us. He knew that. And he still loved me. Still accepted me. This isn't either an acceptance with just a little stuff hanging on. This is total engulfment. He's accepted me every single bit. WWJD. That's it. What would <laughs> Jesus do? For I say that Christ has become a servant to the circumcision. Why does he call him that? Who is that? The Jew. The Jew. Right. Are they proud of that? Yes. Why? Yeah, true. That's what they were. Mm -hmm. Right. That's an outward expression of we are God's chosen people because that would be very proud. <coughs> right? Can you imagine just always having something on you to know, oh that's God's chosen people. Oh yeah. that's God Well, that would create major pride in me. <laughs> no, look who I am. Look whose I am. Why? Because of my heritage. You can't have that. You're not a Jew. You don't have that bloodline. Deuteronomy 76 says God chose them to be a holy people. Mm. <laughs> There's the reason he chose them. Apart. Sanctified, holy, set apart unto yeah. God. Okay? Which is what you're supposed to do as your reasonable service of worship. Right. Then in a circumcision just means the Jew. It's not any act of circumcision. It uh -uh. just means the Jew. Because he says servant to the circumcision. And here it is on behalf of the truth of God to confirm the promises given to the fathers. So Christ became a servant to them because he fulfilled all those scriptures that were given to the prophets. That was not given to the people of the world. That was given to the Jewish nation, so they were looking. Look, Christ fulfilled those scriptures. He glorified God, accepted the circumcision <coughs> on behalf of the truth. Where was the truth? As it is written, okay, to confirm the promises given to the Father. Now, Piper says, the glory God seeks to magnify is supremely the glory of his mercy. Say that again. To glory, the glory God seeks to magnify is supremely the glory of his mercy. How, explain how there's mercy in these verses. Mercy. We have hope. We have hope. Mercy. Yes. Forgiven, accepted. Accept. If you're accepted just the way you are, are you being judged? No. You're being shown mercy. 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 I mean, what do people do when they would run for sanctuary? Mercy. Mercy. Give me mercy. Right? Don't kill me. Give me mercy. As God, Christ, accepts us, he is magnifying God's mercy. Who he is and what he could do has every right to do. He did not do. He did exactly the opposite, which makes no sense. He even created us with Adam and Eve knowing he's going to have to do this because they're going to do this. But he did it anyway. That's crazy. That's mercy. That's love unexplainable. And they still look stone and say, that is good. That is. And if we can get our head around, he died for people that we think are the most evil things that have ever hit the earth. Okay? 
even in you know our history, Hitler, even Osama bin Laden, even Stalin and Mussolini. Yes, he died for them. He accepted them if they will only accept him. I don't have that kind of love. I can't even comprehend that. People that did such horrible things to your chosen people simply because they were your chosen people. I don't, I don't get that. Christ died for him too. Because there is no partiality with God. Right? There's none. Again, we could stop there and live our lives like that and it would change the world. Were you going to say something, Joni? I was wondering if an example of today is a parent of a child or a husband, a wife of a husband, who has committed murder but they still love them. That's a very small, minute right. Because example. they're in prison but they still love them even mm -hmm. though their actions are Which is hard. hard. Yeah. I mean, you, you hear of people that go to the trial and they still love that man that, that killed their right. people. Right. Their, their person, their loved one. Yeah. It's a very small example. but It is, but it's crazy. Well, I mean, look at the Amish people that did it. The world will never forget that. Mm -hmm. Never forget that. Hello? Um, okay. Yeah? Let me make sure. Oh, hey, Kristen. Just a minute. No, I didn't forget anything. Accepting one another glorifies God. Christ accepted both the Jew and the Gentiles, and Scripture was written for our encouragement. Mm -hmm. Is God faithful to his word? How do we know that? I mean, it doesn't say that in here, but how do we know that? Because he died for us. Okay, and that's a character quality of who he is. Scripture says, even though we are faithless, he remains faithful. Why? Because that's who he is. That's who he is. He, he can't be faithless. He can't lie. That's just something he cannot do because of who he is. That's why he's infinite and we're finite. We cannot understand that. Now, the mercy was to the Gentiles, right. This hope, it comes back to uh, verse 9. And for the Gentiles to glorify God for his mercy as it is written. Did you know Gentiles and stuff were, were written about so many times in the Old Testament? Yeah. Yeah. That was like, oh, look at that. That's where we are. That's where we are. <laughs> Therefore, I will give praise to you among the Gentiles, and I will sing to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people, which would be the Jews. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the people praise him. And then Isaiah says, There shall come the root of Jesse. Who's that? Jesus. Jesus, because he can be traced all the way back to David's bloodline through Mary. And he who arises to rule over the who? Gentiles. Right. In him shall the Gentiles hope. hope. Oh. Put verse 4 right next to that word hope. Go back to what is that hope? What's that hope? Remember in 5.5 it says hope does not disappoint. And hope comes <coughs> oh, through perseverance and encouragement through the scriptures and because of God's mercy. That's why we have hope in such a desperate world. In Christ, then, not just the Jew, but the Gentiles have hope. So can the Jew look with contempt at the Gentile? Not to be in Christ. That's why they are not accepting Jesus. I think that, that's part of it. I think that is part of it because he would include the Gentile and they don't. I mean, that can't be. Those dogs. But he quotes the Old Testament. Okay, God is the giver of hope. Verse 13, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Now remember, believing is that verb of faith. Same word. It's tistis. Believing is the verb, faith is the noun. Why? So that you will abound in hope. How? By the power of the Holy Spirit, who where? Right. This is how we have hope. That's the only reason we could have hope. By the power of the Holy Spirit. 
who's within now, not upon. That's the hope that we have. And again, remember, it's not the wishing kind of thing. That's, that's not what we're talking about. Now, when we get to um, 14 to 33, <coughs> concerning you, my brethren, is this encouragement? I am also convinced about you that you're full of goodness. goodness. And you're filled with what? Knowledge. Knowledge. And you're also able to admonish one another. What's that word mean? Admonish. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, call to, I call to admonish your children. How? Correct. 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 Mm-hmm. Instruct. Does that come with judgment and contempt? No, no it does not. No. Love, because the reason for discipline is what to teach, right. to, teach to love, to instruct, to build up, not to tear down. Mm-hmm. What are you trying to build up and encourage Good when you behavior. admonish? Good righteous, righteous, yeah. righteous, right living. Because it's yeah. mom's rule. Yeah. <clears throat> because of your love for God, and because you are His, you want to please Him. You want to do what's right to, so that you glorify, which means to what? Give a correct estimate of who he is. If I constantly live in disobedience and I constantly live in sin and I constantly, as my habit of life, am I glorifying God? I can't be. I'm not giving a correct estimate of who he is. My lifestyle is not glorifying him because I'm not telling you what he's like at all. I'm telling you what the world and my selfish desires are like. Not God. That's, that's hard. Okay? So, why would he put the admonish in there when he's just told you not to judge and he's just told you not to regard with contempt? It's, it's a hell. Not a, it's a hell. Not a, yeah. What are you supposed to do with chapter 12 that lists all the spiritual gifts? Yeah. Well, what am I supposed to do with that? I can't judge and I can't regard with contempt. So, right? You are to admonish. In love. Because you're walking in love, and now you have the power of Holy Holy Spirit Spirit. inside to enable you to do that with love and not judging and contempt. Okay? So. This is kind of a side, but I wonder if that's one of the places. You know, people will say, I've read scripture and it contradicts itself all the time. Yes. This must be one of the places that they see that. It is. And what, what is king? In our study, what is king? Context Context is king. You cannot make something obscure and take it out and set it apart from the whole rest of Scripture. If that is not backed up throughout the rest of Scripture, you don't build anything on top of that. Well, I used to tell someone too that a lot of times these words don't mean the same thing when they were written as they do now. Right. You, yeah. you, and culture-wise. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Yes, I got you. Right. I got you. Because the right. culture would be different. Like like women having a dormant on their head or not. Yeah. Being, yeah, like that. Well, because of the culture. Then if you talk about admonishing someone, it's you're doing it wrong. Right. You know, and that's not what he means here at all. Which, how could you get total clarification of what this means? Look it up. You look yes. the word up. Look the word up. If you look that word up, there will be no gray area. None. But again... Most people don't do that. Most people don't even know that there's books available. That's to true, but it's just a <laughs> website. Let's go click. What does that mean in Greek? In the context of this this chapter, this verse, this scripture, this Bible. Just, there's, there's no gray area once you do that. Okay? Um, Paul, 14 to 33, he encouraged the Roman believers because he said, I'm sure that you're full of all knowledge. Goodness. He's convinced of that. Well, what does that do when someone tells you, I know you can do this. I know you can do this. And it's going to take some more. He hasn't even met them. He hasn't even been there yet. Okay? But he's convinced. How could he be convinced? Because of what they hear. And he's yeah. bold stirring them to encourage them. And if they're believers, who does he know is inside? Christ. The same Holy Spirit that's in yeah. him. How can he be convinced? Because it's the same God. God can create that unity. How do I know? Because he's in me. I actually love the Gentiles now. Trust me, that was not his habit of life. 
He killed them because they were heretics. Gentile believers is who he killed. Okay? Now, he's the apostle to the Gentiles. <laughs> that's and just he, crazy. I mean, that's God's sense of humor. Let me just tell you, this is not going to be your life. You're going to be totally the opposite. You're going to love these people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm talking about 180. Uh, exactly. And he does. Yeah. And he loves the Jewish people so much that he said he would let his salvation go if that would mm -hmm. save them. Mm -hmm. Oh, my word. God did a miracle in this man's life, which is why he used him so mightily. But I have written very boldly to you on some points. Oh, wow. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. He did. Why? To remind you again. Because of that grace that was given me from God. Remember what I was? Remember what I did? Know who I am now? See the difference? Now he's a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, ministering as a priest of the gospel of God. Why? He's been charged with that. He's been charged. He's, he's commissioned. He's obligated. He's got to preach the gospel. By thy offering of the Gentiles may become acceptable and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Explain that to me. How is he yeah, offering? Who is he offering them to? To God. To God and Just also like where's, where's he going? Where's he headed? The Roman church was made up mostly of Gentiles. Gentiles. He's offering them up as believers that you need to come alongside of and unity in spirit because who's going to be rejecting them? The Jews. The Jews. Okay? He's laid out this whole case of why all have sinned. Abraham is the father of all who believe. Therefore, Abraham is my father. Remember Chuck's question when he first came in. I want to know at the end of your course, who is Israel? Okay. Who is Israel? Israel's God's who's chosen believe? people. Right, but who does that include now? All those who believe all by faith. All those who believe. Those who believe, because Abraham became the father of all those who faith. believe. Right. Abraham was the father of the Jews, but he didn't come from a Jewish father. What do you do with that? That means God accepted him. Well, was he a Jew or a Gentile? I don't know. How could he be the father of Jews when he was not born from Jews because there was no Jewish nation until he had eyes? I, <laughs> Can I go in there? I can't reason that out in my head. Does that base my salvation? No, it's an external. Let it go. I don't have to go there. Okay. So he's offering the Gentiles. It might be a little offensive to you Jews, but they're believers too. you got to accept them because we are united in Christ because of our belief in Christ who came. Okay? We are build one another up. The desired result, obedient in word and deed. Look at this. Therefore in Christ I have found reason for boasting in all things of himself, and no, all things pertaining to God. <clears throat> Anybody can boast in that. I mean, if you know your God, you can't stop boasting in your God. He's overwhelming of things to boast about. For I will not presume to speak of anything except what? What Christ has accomplished through me. Does he have a plethora of things to write about but that? Well, never ending. Never ending of what Christ has done through him. Resulting in the obedience of? Gentiles. The Gentiles. <coughs> in word, so their language, their speak, their voice, right? Mm -hmm. Which is to be one with the body of Christ. And their deed. Remember what, the, what was the obedience of faith that we talked about? Remember that? How? Deeds follow. Deeds follow what? Your faith. How am I going to know you're a Christian? Your evidence. The evidence of the obedience of your faith. If I know this to be true and this to be right, do I do it? I don't know, do I? Should I? Do I want to? Do I not want to? 
does it matter whether I want to? It really doesn't matter whether I live or whether I die. I am the Lord's, and I live unto the Lord. Why? Because my brother is more important than myself. I'm supposed to think of others more highly than I do myself. That's love. That brings judgment and contempt. It, it can't bring judgment and contempt. I'm loving my brother so much that I put his needs above my own and think, you know, it would be better off if I did this for him. Even though I really want to do this, this is way more convenient for me to do this, I'm going to do that. Because you're not giving an incorrect estimation of who you are in your own mind. He's built this all the way up. He's ending his letter. <clears throat> in the power of signs and words, or wonders, in the power of the Spirit. So all those signs and wonders that he's done, who's responsible for that? Holy the Holy Spirit. Not Paul. He's not boasting in what he's done. He's boasting in what God has done through him. All right? He will not take credit for that. He hasn't preached in Rome yet. Uh, so that from Jerusalem, around the bar, I, I don't know how to say this, as far as Illyricum, I guess, mm -hmm. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Wow! What an accomplishment! So now what does he want to do? He wants to go where Christ has not been preached before. I aspire to preach the gospel not where Christ was already named, so I'm not going to build up on somebody else's foundation, but as it is written, they who had no news of him shall see, and they who have not heard him will understand. Now, for this reason, for what reason? What she was just saying. Okay? Because he's preached all about, yeah. right? Yeah. And he doesn't want to build upon another man's foundation. But because he had to preach all around, I've been prevented from coming to you. But now. This is Paul's, right? This is what I want to do. But now, with no further place for me to go in these regions, and since I have had for many years a longing to come to you, whenever I go to Spain, it doesn't give him a date. Whenever I go to Spain. So whose agenda does he have? God's. Uh, God's agenda. This is what I desire to do. I want to come to you. Whenever I go to Spain, I'm going to do this and this and this and go to you, right? That's what my plan is. For I hope to see you in passing and to be helped on my way there by you when I then first enjoyed your company for a while. Now, he's on his way to Jerusalem to give a gift to the saints, specifically the poor. Now, this is interesting. He's going to serve the saints in Jerusalem. For Macedonia and Achaia have been pleased to make a contribution for the poor. Where? Among the saints in Jerusalem. Okay, so that's where he's bringing the gift. Yet they, who's they? The believers in Macedonia and Achaia were pleased to do so, and they are indebted to them. Who's the them? The saints in Jerusalem. Right. For if the Gentiles have shared in their spiritual thing, who's this there? Jesus. Those believers in Jerusalem, right? The Jews. Spiritual things, they, those Gentiles, are indebted to minister to, who's them? The Jews. The Jews, the saints in Jerusalem, we're still in context, also in material things. So what is that? No, That's money, right, because they're poor. Therefore, because of all of that, when I have finished this and put my seal on this fruit of theirs, I will go on by way of, of you to Spain. Now, I read in my commentary, uh, my, put my seal on this fruit. The fruit is their contribution, okay? Put my seal just meant make sure the gift was safely in their hands. That's all it meant. So now Paul's a courier with money. That makes him a walking target for what? Robbery. Robbery. Yeah. yeah, this is not a safe place where he's walking, where he's going. He's like a target. Look, he has money. He has money. He doesn't think a thing of it. I know that when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of the blessing of Christ. Oh, he knows that. Here's his prayer requests, and they are so detailed. 
Um, here we go. I, um, okay. I urge you, brethren, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit. So there's your reasons. Strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. Strive together. That would create unity. unity. So, would they both want to pray for Paul? Yes. Whoa, yes, they love him. That, why? What's he want to happen? Safety. Rescued from the who? Disobedient in Judea. Because remember, they have an obedience of faith. These are people that are being disobedient in the faith in Judea. And that my service for Jerusalem may prove acceptable to the saints in where? Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Right. He's not talking to the Romans that you Roman believers, I want it to be acceptable to you. He wants it to be acceptable to the Jewish people in the church in Jerusalem. Why? So that I may come to you in joy. Yes. How? By the, will. By the will of God. And find refreshing rest in your company. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Now, do you have friends where you can go to their house and find refreshing rest? It's like, I don't have to come in my makeup and my good shoes and good clothes. I can just come and go. I should just chill. There's the chair, a glass of tea. Knock yourself out. Oh, this is what he needs. Why does he need that? He says, he oh my gosh! <laughs> just, just reading makes me exhausted. <laughs> okay. And the traveling by boat is like the three thousand miles. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a great point. How far is he going? Spain. Right. 3,000 miles. He wants to find rest in their company. Yeah. What does rest shower. bring? <laughs> right? Peace. Peace. Yeah, that puts a little perspective on it, does it? 3,000 miles. Long ways in that time. <laughs> Peace brings acceptance. It brings love. Building up one another. It, it brings unity. Isn't there always strife? when you've just got too much on your plate and you just can't see the end of it and it's never ending and I just got to make it till this date and okay we're coming up into the holidays yeah. does that not help we got this Christmas program and then the kids have this and I have to do this for their school program and then I have this for that and then we got to oh we got to go Christmas shopping and we got a Christmas tree and we got to do the Thanksgiving thing and we got to make the plane flights for this and oh my gosh okay he okay Paul felt everything that you feel he had to bring this gift he had to go, he had to finish this letter because it's got to get off to the Roman believers now. They got to get this. So I got to finish this up because now I got to go to Spain. I got to do this and this and this. And I feel like this is God called me to hear and I am compelled to preach the gospel to people who haven't heard. So where are they? He's exhausted. He's coming to them for refreshing rest. Now, are they going to want to go, what about this? What about that? I got to talk to you about this. I got to talk about that. Okay, absolutely. It's Paul. Who would want to do that? Well, he's got to have rest first. Got to fill back his, his tank up. And then he'll be able to get it back out again. That's a great principle for us to go by. If we exhaust ourselves, we're no use to anybody. If we're totally spent, we're no use to anybody. Very interesting I, I going into the holiday season like that. Probably welcome jail. <laughs> 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 Because why do you think God had to slow him down? Yeah, right. You yeah. gotta write some of this New Testament because this is way more about what's happening present. Are we glad God slowed him down? Yes. Oh my gosh, the New Testament would not have been written like that. Thank you. When you wish you get sick, just you could lay in bed for a couple weeks. I wish I'd get a call so I could just check out. Oh, I just want to get a call so I can call to bed and have a reason to actually do that. Right? Yeah, and not feel guilty because I'm in bed doing nothing. Right. Just because I'm tired. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you just about two minutes because it's almost ten after. <laughs> I wish that worked for me.